Hey guys, I am just back from the strongest man on earth and today I'm going to give my honest recap of how I thought I did at the competition. There's lots to talk about, so let's get into it. First event was max deadlift. With this event as well, you're not allowed to wear suits. It was raw, so you had to just wear normal straps, a belt only, nothing that gave you too much support from the ground. So as a lot of people know, my raw deadlift ain't the best. So I was going into this event a bit on the nervy side. My opener, I think, was 370 kilograms. I wanted to do a lighter opener so that I could, one, get confidence, two, put points on the board. So the first lift, as it should be, was very routine. It was nice to get the nerves shaken off. It was nice to um, get that first lift under the belt and have a build a bit more confidence. So in the second lift, this is when the strategy comes into play because the first lift, no one, you're not allowed to see anybody else's first lift, but then on the second, the whole field opens up and then that's when you're allowed to see other people, what they do. You have one minute to get your second lift in. So obviously it's hard when you don't have your coach there. So I was going back and forth. I was trying to figure out what to do. In my head, my second lift, I was what in between 407 kilograms and 410. I think my second lift was about 408, which the reason I did that is because it put me above a lot of people's second lift when they were pulling. So yeah, second lift, I went out. I felt much more confident going into this lift than I did the first. My nerves had kind of been out under control. My adrenaline was pumping and I was able to pull it. So I was very happy with that result because that was probably my biggest raw deadlift in a competition in a long, long time on a standard bar as, bar as well. And then the third lift, um, for me to get any points or to go up one position, I had to go and pull 427 kilograms or 424 kilograms, just give or take. So I put that number in and uh, I maybe should have got myself a bit fired up more, but I kind of was laughing and like, there's no way I'm going to get this because I've not done anywhere near this in training. It was an unknown territory for me. So I went and stepped up to the bar for the third lift. It was cemented to the ground. I, had to pull that to get maybe third, fourth place. But in the end, if I had done any other numbers under 24 and 24 kilograms, I would have stayed in the same position. So it was a massive kind of jump for myself. Didn't get it, but in the end, I think I ended up coming top seven in the deadlift. There's a lot of things I needed to kind of take away from that deadlift. There's stuff that I need to go back home with in training and really kind of work on. It's hard doing a raw deadlift when you're prepping a lot in a suit. But yeah, I basically matched what I'd done in the gym and it was my biggest pull that I've done in a while. Second event, of day one of the strongest man on earth was the axle into log medley. So this was the event that I was really looking forward to. I put a lot of work into the gym. It was so, so hard to train, but it was so brutal. I think, I mean, I don't know the weights exactly, but I think it was kind of like a 150 axle, 160 log, 175 axle, a 190 log to finish. So there's three logs, two axles. It's hard enough doing one of these. So to do five back to back, as you can see here, I went there. I, the good thing about this as well, we had two minutes to do it, so I knew I was strong enough to get all five. So for me in this event was just about pacing myself and using all the time I could because realistically I thought maybe you know two of us would finish it, but I think three of us finished it in the end. Yeah, they were faster than me, but like I said, my game plan was just do not rush it and just get it done, and that's what I did. I think when I got to the last axle, I cleaned it onto my belt, but I had to put it down because you weren't allowed belt cleans. And then it was good that I was able to get it back up on my chest, press it, and then really take my time for the last log. Past events, I would have just rushed it, but I took an extra like five, 10 seconds. Boom, got it up. The crowd went mental and I was very, very buzzing after that. That gave me a lot of confidence, proved that I still have some of the best shoulders in the world and that event you know, went perfect for myself. Maybe I could have shaved a few seconds off here and there, but I had that game plan of just making sure I used the whole time and completing the event, which was the main thing in my head. The third event of day one was keg toss for max height. So again, this was a, a very brutal event when you've just done two basically very brutal events as well. And the guys here like myself, Mitchell, Half or Wes, you know, we had, we were all big keg throwers. I mean, we shared the world record and, you know, my lift was down from my world record attempt at World Shores Man, so was Mitchell, so was Wes. So you could see the fatigue was kicking in. I was a bit hit and miss with this. I think this is one I need to kind of dial in properly, kind of really get it screwed in for training. I think sometimes I'm too far away from the bar, sometimes I'm too close to the bar. You know, I, I think there was one attempt that I took three, three attempts to get it over, which you know, it shouldn't happen because in an event like this, it's if you both go out in the same round, but I hit two event, two kegs and Mitchell did one, he'd win the, win the, win that event. So he'd get more points. So it's very important with this event that I'm really kind of consistent at it and really kind of efficient. So I think I ended up coming joint, I don't actually know, joint second. I think a halfer broke the world record there and he's an unbelievable thrower, but I was just wanting to try and fight and just try and stay in top three in this event. And I was able to do that got me decent points and uh, we move on. But yeah, the keg toss, like I said, was a bit of a hit and miss. I need to start getting it really consistent because I'm not confident enough with keg tossing. But top three in keg toss is a good position to be going into my favorite event 
the fourth event of the day, the final event, the Atlas Stones. So the Atlas Stones, this was something that's never been done in competition before. This was basically five stones, I think it was 204 kilograms, 220, 230, 250, 270, you know, something like that. But the one at the end was 600 pounds. So in training, I had done a good few reps of 265 kilograms. But in my head here, I had Taki on backstage. The stone felt really nice backstage. The Taki was sticking nicely. Um, but I was getting a few doubts because everybody was coming back telling me like, oh, the stones are a bit slippy. I seen some of the people backstage as well when they were going out there and it was, the stones weren't sticking. And I've never had that problem before. And it was just panicking because a lot of good stone lifters that I know are good at stones were failing these. And I was like, crap, something's bad's going to happen. So anyway, I just kind of had this thing. I was like, I'm just going straight for the 600 pound. You know, Brian's put this in, in the competition for a reason for someone to attempt it. I felt like it wouldn't feel right if I didn't attempt it. And whatever happened, happened. Unfortunately, I attempted it. I didn't get it up as a lot of people know. Then my tacky just kept slipping off. Maybe I should have been smart and got you know, points on the board. Maybe that's if you know, Luke or my coach there would have helped me, but I was just kind of so in the zone that I just went straight for the 600 pound, very confident in myself, failed it and ended up getting zero on the Atlas Stones. Yeah, it's one of those things, it's a learning curve. You know, it's going back to train them harder, maybe get some sleeves, maybe not have that issue with the tacky again, but there's a few things you can take away, but the main thing is I tried it, it didn't work this time. If it had worked, it would have been a total different uh, result. So yeah, it is what it is at the end of the day. I'm not very sad about this event because I know how, how good I am at it. Like if this 600 pound stone was back in a competition in two weeks, I'd be able to do it. It was just one of them things that I just got it wrong on the day. I'd rather fail in a stone event like this in zero than I would if it was a pressing event or something. Because like I said, with stones, I know that on any given day I can do this, but it was just not my day and uh, unfortunately the risk did not pay off so at the end of that day we've got the scoreboard up here that put me into seventh place after day one which isn't a very good position to be in but it was my own fault that i was in that position day two we start with my probably my least confident event my event that i've never really been good at i've never you don't have it much in comp competitions but was a uh, squat this squat you could call it a squat it was a a beast of a thing it had i think it was like 365 370 kilograms i think not many people got reps of this it was an absolute torture of device you know, i just went in there i think you know as a matter of fact i kind of didn't have any buzz i was going in there not confident at all the warm-ups backstage felt like absolute crap i ended up taking wraps up out of me but i just thought not to wear wraps there because i just think with a machine like that you didn't need to wear them when i unwrapped it as the event itself like on in the video i could see that i didn't feel heavy at all but then as soon as I got it onto the, the safeties or the stops, whatever you want to call them, it was just like the whole world had, was crushing me. So that was, uh, I was probably training it wrong, didn't train it hard enough. But at the end of the day, it was out of my comfort zone with squats. I've never been one of those guys that can, has squatted big weights. And unfortunately, again, I zeroed that. And, you know, we started day two the same as we ended day one, which and was an unfortunate event. I'm glad that event was over with because that was the one I was least looking forward to. A few other people zeroed as well who are good squatters so you know that the event itself was very very tough and Brian made it to the toughest probably squat that anybody's ever done in competition. So yeah we go on to the sixth event which is the power medley. So it's basically like a big grain or wheelbarrow thing that you walk with and then you go straight into an arm over arm and I mean a heavy arm over arm. So anyway the first part of this was no problem to me. I could put my body weight into it. I was picking this up no bother then. The second part of this was arm over arm see as well the massive massive trap as soon as i pulled this it was hellish it was just every pull you had to put 100 percent into it you had to just keep pulling keep pulling keep pulling the heaviest arm over arm i've done i'm still pretty happy with it i still got a decent position with it a lot of people didn't finish it but it was uh brian said it was going to be heavy and it was it was very heavy but i think i ended up top five top six in that event a decent effort by myself and it was basically all i could do i I felt like I was a bit gas, more gassed out than I should have been maybe after the squat and warming up for the squat, but I still did enough in my eyes to kind of get top five or six in that event. And I was thinking to myself, hopefully I can push myself back up the leaderboard. We then move on to the seventh event, which again is another event I've not really been known for is the dumbbell medley. I think it started again at 105 kilograms all the way up to 135 kg or whatever. So this event, you know, by the time you get onto the seventh event and, and having a medley like this, you're fatigued. There was a lot of people getting two, three dumbbells. So I thought if I get three dumbbells, it's big points for myself. So thankfully I went out there and got three dumbbells. Maybe if I took a bit extra time, I would have got the fourth one. The fourth one felt like it could have been there. And when you see a lot of these kind of big pressures as well, dropping points on the dumbbells, you could see how 
much of fatigue to kick in, but it just proves that my pressing's up there now, still the best in the world. My dumbbells, I'm not mentally weak on dumbbells anymore. I know that when I just attack and be aggressive on the dumbbells, they go up. And maybe if I've had a bit more confidence in myself, I could have attacked the fourth one a bit more, gained even more points. But like I said, three for myself, I was very, very happy with. I was uh, warming up with them and thinking like, if I get one or two, this is going to be good. But I kept my head, went out there and did three, which I was very, very happy with. And then we go on to the finale. The last event that Brian Shaw loves is finger fingers into power stairs. Very, very heavy power stairs. So again, this event was kind of the same as last year where I won, but you know, a lot of people have made improvements on this event. And uh, yeah, I was up against Evan Singleton, who I knew was fast, so I used him as a pacemaker. We both done the two the two fingers quite fast. And then, yeah, the power stairs for me, the 250, had I made a wee mistake on it. And the 275, I just was doing every step kind of trying to just empty the tank and I think that was important just to make sure I emptied the tank not give up and left everything out in the field and that's what I did with this event I was done after this I couldn't lift up anything else I was proud that I was able to finish it finish the show put on the best show I could after the circumstances after the day one and the first event and the day two but you know I battled hard all the way to the end wanted to obviously hit the podium I was way out of reach by the time I got to that event but I didn't want to give up if I had given up and not tried to complete the events that would have been even worse for myself but yeah did my best Evan Singleton beat me to the to that uh to the top of that stairs and unfortunately as well and uh end of the day I think I ended up overall seventh place or something so it was uh it's a bit of a miserable performance but you know i'm back home now and i need to put a lot of work in to kind of not let let this ever happen again <laughs> after having a few days to kind of take it all in it's it's uh obviously i'm not happy <laughs> you go to these competitions to win and for me to come seventh place in this competition i should be doing better you know, a lot of blames on myself you know we can talk about the climate we can talk about all that but i've been i was at brian shaw's last year so i knew exactly what to expect when i you know, got off the plane. I knew how much higher we were up above sea level. I should have maybe done things differently, maybe gone a bit earlier, asked Brian if I could come over a bit earlier, maybe change things up in training, maybe be a little bit lighter on my feet or whatever. But I don't think the climate affected me at all because, you know, my pressing events were very, very good. And last year, that's what affected me was the dizziness and all that kind of stuff. You know, we can talk about that all day long, but it was just, I think my overall performance, I think I just wasn't prepped enough, wasn't ready. I think, you know, obviously having half, half for back as well and, you know, Mitchell, I mean, First of all, you know, Mitchell Hooper is an unbelievable athlete. He's, you know, proving time and time again that he's winning these shows. There's no other athlete like him. I don't think there's any other athlete that can do as many shows and be as consistent as he is. And so a big massive well done to him. Also a well done to Half or Beyonce. And you know, I have to look at these two guys as blueprints and be like, you know, I'm meant to be a professional athlete, but I'm over in America eating sweeties, eating crap food, and these guys are eating good quality food that helps build muscle, helps with your performance and all that kind of stuff. So I think you know, it's all, it's about how I take basically my World Strongest Man prep to other competitions and, you know, people always say like, oh, I always care, only care about World Strongest Man, blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that, but, you know, I'm changing, I'm, I'm really wanting to now get dug in and really put a show on in Vegas, Glasgow and really put on a show for Rogan, really win Rogan, that's, I've had a sh talk with a lot of people, so I've had a talk with my coach and we've really going to be changing a lot of things, obviously as well, not having Luke there, I think it was just basically my attitude to training as well, I think, I got a bit complacent, you know, obviously when you win a title like World Straw is man, everybody knows how much time you're on the road, but I should always have time to be like, right, training comes first, diet comes first, recovery comes first, and the rest is after that. If I want to be the greatest of all time, like people are talking about, I need to win these other shows. So, yeah, I'm not shying away that I I need to win these shows. It was a bad show for myself, but, you know, we put, put it to bed now. It's one bad show I've had in the last year and a half. I've not had these continuous bad shows like I used to do, but after Worlds, it's one hiccup. Again, as well, we look at it in another way that if I had loaded the stone over the bar, I would be sitting here third place. But I know how much strong I need to get with my raw power. There's nothing hiding that. You know, it's exposed on the squat, it's exposed on the deadlift. But I think the other mistakes I made were just maybe because I didn't have my coach or maybe just me being too pumped up and be like, I'm just going to go straight for it. Whereas I should have been, had my professional head on step back and being like, right, yeah, I can do this stone, but I need to do this stone first to get eight points. You know, there's things like that that I should have probably done, but seventh place isn't a reflection on me. I want to really show people that no, they're not seeing the best Tom Stoughton yet. I've not been 100%. I want to take all my prep that I do for World Strongest Man and all these competitions and, uh, you know, going forward, we're going to do that. There's going to be massive changes if none of this stuff happens to myself, to my team, to a lot of people around me as well. And you know, I take accountability for all the things I do that if I, you know, have bad sessions, if I miss meals, it's all on me. But then other people have to take accountability as well if they, you know, give me the wrong training or the wrong nutrition or whatever. If I do things 100% to my capability and so does my team i know that i can be unbeatable and i can't wait to show that at you know vegas glasgow then rogan in 
you know, 2025 will speak for itself, but there's some different plans for 2025, but we'll talk about that after. Later, lastly as well, big massive shout out to Shaw, Brian Shaw and Kerry, I think. Right now, this is highest paying show, the second highest paying show. You know, it's proven that they're, they're for the athletes and that's what Brian Shaw has always been like. He's been always been for the athletes. Even when he competed at this show, he put all the money back in for the athletes. So yeah, he's doing massive things and a uh, big fight you for inviting me again, Brian. I will never, ever, ever put on a performance of that again. I promise you I will win this show next year and I will come back hungrier, stronger, better and fitter. Thank you again to all the fans that came over to see me. Thank you to every person that supports myself and Luke. Luke will be there next year as well, so you'll have both the Spicy Brothers in Colorado fighting for that title. I'm going to go train. I've got massive, massive changes coming nutrition-wise and training-wise. So, yeah, if I don't get to Vegas 100% Tom Stoltman, then you can shoot me. <laughs> but nah, I'm going to be coming into all these competitions, hungry, ready, ready to go. And again, I promise you guys, you'll never see this performance ever again. Stay spicy, fight you for the love, fight you for the continued support. Please stop never ringing that little bell. Ding, 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 ding.